I'm James Berger with the Bakersfield, California. We are back with Off the Press, and uh, I'm joined, of course, by my co-hosts, uh, Russell Johnson and Nicole Parra, and our guest of honor, Mr. Mr. Ooh, Cloud. Of honor, even. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, We're honored oh, to have you. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, now we come. Uh, now I think we have to get around to the politics because, yep. uh, frankly, the you know the worst part, the worst part, but also most juicy for a political reporter like myself. So you'll <laughs> forgive me if I'm excited. Um, you're running against Jackie Sullivan, who has been in office for quite some time. Yes, uh, a couple decades ish. Yep. Uh, you know, though my the city government reporter Theo Douglas could uh, give me the correct number. I think it's twenty one. Twenty one, maybe. Uh, and what do you? Uh, how do you? How do you run a, a campaign against Graham? a saint? Your, your, yes, that's what uh, everyone uh, calls her to me. Uh, a very say, how do you very run beloved, against a saint? Uh, Long term uh, local personality and politician. I have heard nothing but good things about Jackie Sullivan. Um, as it comes to her as a person, I understand she's a very sweet lady. I understand that um, she cares a lot about the community. Um, I also understand that she votes with the same other three council members, that they're connected through their political ties, and that she's indebted to that group, um, Mr. Abernathy, and the tune of somewhere... F $50,000. About $50,000. So... And has been for... A well, long time. A decade? A, a, yeah, and could have been doing fundraising this entire time and gotten out of that situation, but she's not. Now, my concern is is that she has a very good program, the In God We Trust, trying to get other cities to follow our lead, um, worrying about other cities. I would like her to worry a little bit more about Bakersfield. Um, I don't think it's a bad cause, but I think that the amount of time that she spends on it um, would be better served uh, for her ward. I think that breaking up, we've had the same group, whether they're the same people, in control of Bakersfield for a very, very long time. And um, there are some serious problems that have been hanging around for a very, very long time. We have outside consultants come in and tell us, and we spend thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, you're an expert. Come in here. Tell the city council what we're doing wrong. Oh, well, the people that be don't agree with you, so we're going to put that on the shelf, and we're going to waste that money twice. We're going to waste the money that we spent on you to do this study, and then we're going to waste the money by not fixing it the way that you told us to do. We shouldn't have hired them if we didn't think that they knew what they were talking about. So that causes some concern, and that's the stagnant problem that we have. And the only way um, to change a problem of stagnation is to stir it up. And the only way to stir this up is to break that hold and to have people that are not attributed uh, to the same group have the majority all the time, because whatever that group wants is going to go. And that's the way it's been for a long time. I would break that. And I tell you, I would be one tyrant of a swing vote. <laughs> swing I've, votes I have will, a lot of power. I will tell you, I, if, if, that, if, those, if the other three stayed linked, not that they have the same type, type of connections, but if they had an agreement on one side and the other three, I don't care what either one of them thinks. I'm going to do what's best for my warden, what's best for the city, which is going to make me crazy sounding, I know. So l let's talk a little bit about kind of the – uh, the campaign side of it. You obviously talked about your opponent. She's mm -hmm. got a consultant uh, who's been well uh, well written about in the Bakersfield, California, as Quite of a recently. Bit. There was an article. Um, and they're also well known for getting a lot of people elected. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your kind of campaign team, your nuts and bolts. Nicole always likes to say, who's at your, your <laughs> kitchen cabinet that's kind of helping you? I have uh, a lot of people that are pitching in. I don't know if I would say I have a head campaign manager at this time. Um, I've got people putting together uh, my website. They're working on that. I just gave them a bunch of information there um, to be added. So that might even already be up, talking about some of the things that I think are important. I'm getting signs made, obviously. I've got my account open. Um, I've already started taking some donations, um, some small ones here and there. But I got to get my account 
figure it out. That's way more complicated, by the way, for people who don't know. That is super more complicated than it should be. You should be able to go down, open an account, and send the information off. That is not how it's done. That is a chicken and the egg problem that... That is true. And I deal with the court system on a regular basis, and I think it's a big pain. So that I don't, we can't fix that, but that's crazy on a side note. But um, I'm working on that. I've got a fundraiser coming up at the Mark on September 15th um, that we just booked. I'm going to have another one after that in case there's people that don't like each other that like me. So I can invite one to one and one to another, <laughs> which, believe me, there's a lot of that going around. Um, some people just don't play nice together. So do you have a consultant? Do you have someone who's leading the campaign, advising you, um, you know, if it's less than 60 days out? I have lots of people that have given me advice. Right. Um, so no, you're not going the traditional? Nobody has said, I will be your campaign manager. Right. They well, usually said, you hire. You go out and hire yeah, a manager I, or a consultant. Yeah, I'm just asking. I know. Just, right? I know. because But then you end up $50,000 in debt. Well, I don't know if for a city council race in 60 days it would be that expensive. But I was just asking no, because, I understand. You, you know. I, I understand. Right, but right. a lot of this, until I, as you know, right. and you've been through it, until I can get um, – my account open and start mm -hmm. getting the money to flow in that direction, I have to front all of this right. as a loan to myself. Right. And that's more unpleasant than I was mm -hmm. expecting. Um, I want to walk. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get all of the lists and I'm going to go talk to the voters in my ward and I'm going to mm -hmm. find out what they're mad about, mm -hmm. what they're happy about. Mm -hmm. if a lot of people are happy about something. I'm not going to mess with it. Right. A lot of people are mad about something. You know, you, you throw a fit and stomp your feet and pound the table. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's really, there's a lot of people that are upset about a lot of things that have come to talk to me, but mm -hmm. they're not necessarily the people in my ward. What are the people mm -hmm. in my ward worried about? And I've done some door knocking, and I've met a lot of people out there, and I'm going to continue to do that. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I haven't hired anybody to do that. Um, I'm just going at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that have been through it, that have given me advice. I ask questions. I might call you and ask you something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is the guy <laughs> sitting next so, to me. So talk about, obviously, you said you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to fundraise and you're going to have to do all this. Have you thought about a budget? Have you said, hey, I'm planning on spending this much or this is how much I'd like to spend? Um, and I know sometimes candidates don't like to talk about how much money they're going to dedicate to the campaign on air, but... You know, that, I mean, have you identified what that number is yet? No. Um, everyone tells me that I need to spend seventy to to $100,000. That mm -hmm. sounds ridiculous to me. Um, that is just probably, that just boggles the mind to me that that would be, um, that that would be necessary. I think that my na I have a little bit more name recognition than most people because I have a lot of advertising in town, and I always have. Um, I've been doing what I can to help out in a lot of areas, and I'm going to go shake the hands of many of my voters as I can. If they like me, vote for me. If they think Jackie's doing a good job and or I'm an idiot, then don't. I mean, it. We've turned we've turned politics into something that it really isn't. Politics should be: Is this person going to do a better job than this person? Or am I willing to risk it? Or am I tired of the same old thing for you know however long it's been in any race? Then let the new guy have a shot. I'm the only other choice they've got. So either they're happy with Jackie or they're not. And I, I really believe that there's a lot of people, not, I'm not saying this, I'm not gonna be brave enough to say it, but there's a lot of people that are unhappy with what Jackie's been doing the last years that have been talking to me and they're like, oh, thank goodness someone's running against her. You're brave enough to go against the saint. And, um, She's not a person you can throw mud at. She's not a person. Mm -hmm. She's not a bad person from everything that I've heard. And believe me, I've heard a lot, and nobody has anything aggressively bad to say about her. She seems like a great lady. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that in the last, you know, five to ten years that she's done a spectacular job either. Mm -hmm. You can be a great person and not be effective anymore. And I think that's where we're at. And I think there's a huge concern to have that much money owed to your campaign that you've just sat on. It, I know how I treat people that I owe money to, and that's why I choose not to owe people money, mm -hmm. because I don't want to feel indebted. Because how can you go into a position 
and make the kind of decisions that you have to do when someone that you owe a lot of money to is asking you to do something. That puts a little conundrum on your position. And that's part of the reason I haven't hired anybody. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to be able to fork out, you know, whatever. I don't even know how much someone like that would cost. You would. Uh, right. $10,000 Well, no, not on a city council. I mean, there's various ways. The, yeah. the reason why for local races, why to have someone in-house is important is because everything that you said, and I like the communication part, but to communicate to the X amount of households in your ward, you have to be able to um, get a voter profile. You're going to have to be able to get a mailer. You're going to have to go on the radio. You're going to have to do A, B, and C because you can't walk to every house. It's less than 60 days. You work mm -hmm. nine to five. You know, many of us had to quit our jobs for four months and, and campaign, but obviously larger districts. Um, so you're going to have to have that one person. Um, otherwise, you're going to talk to voters who may not be registered. Your voter profiles won't be clean. And you won't be able to use your time as efficiently. You're a lawyer. You need to use your time efficiently. You have an office manager, right? Someone who does billing. That's what you have to have in a campaign. And it's not a black mark. It's someone who you trust. I'm not saying and you, it's necessarily yeah, a black mark. It's, Are it's, you applying for the job? No, no. I'm just saying that. Because <laughs> it sure when we sounds have like can it. No, believe me. I've done my consulting. When, you ha when we have candidates on the show, it's different levels. You don't need to run a multi-million dollar. You don't even need a $100,000. You don't even need a $50,000 campaign. But you need a campaign, and you definitely need someone to get you through the next 60 days, especially as a first term person candidate you, you know nicole's got a great point i remember the the ward seven race uh to pick my successor uh, i think chris parlier spent maybe like mm -hmm. mid 20s uh you had uh, matt brayman spent almost 20 i think and then you had harmeet de Hensta spent i think it was close to 70 mm -hmm. and chris walked away with that yeah. thing chris parlier walked away with the thing so mm -hmm. nicole's right it's, it's the iron triangle that I mm -hmm. talk about, which is money, manpower, and message. And you got to have, you don't need to have the most of all, but you got to have the right mix of all to, to be out there and, and be successful. So as you're going forward, and I want to talk a little bit about your message as you're moving forward, because you're out there, you're going to be talking to people, you're going to be saying, hey, it's time for new leadership. Um, what, what is the message point you want to leave someone at their door to say, vote for Bobby Cloud, don't vote for the incumbent? To leave at their door. A, a short message would be, um, man, boil it down so small is, is harder than I would have expected. Uh, that I care enough to spend the time. You know, um, I'm not complacent. And uh, that would be basically the message. And I think that's what I'm running against, is complacency. Um, and that happens to all of us. I, I see it happen with people that have been attorneys for 25 years. They haven't cracked a book and in a long time. They learn when they run into the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing, to a certain extent, there's nothing wrong with that. To a certain extent, there is. Um, when you stop being passionate about what you're doing, and then you're not effective anymore. You know, when I stop caring about... Um, what I do as a job, I'm going to change what I do. Uh, after, after as long as Jackie's been doing it, she doesn't have the gusto um, to come out and fight like she once did. I mean, that's just, you know, you do the same thing for too long, you're going to become complacent. And I'm not. I'm new. And it, you know what? If in four years you feel like I'm getting tired of it, kick me out. If, it, if I'm still raring to go and you like what I'm doing, keep me around. But I'm, I'm going to guess I'm not going to be there 20 years, no matter, no matter how that goes. I can't imagine um, sitting on the city council for that long of a period of time and still being able to have the kind of dedication that it takes to be able to deal with every single issue on a level that it deserves. You know, I think that it starts to become mundane, I would guess. I can't imagine doing that. I, if I did it for eight years, I'd be stunned. All right. Well, that's uh, that's the time we have for today, although I have a funny feeling we could go longer <laughs> if we had the time. Um, Mr. Cloud, mm -hmm. thank you very much Absolutely. for joining us. It's been uh, quite an uh, education, and it's great to get to know you. Um, and hope we hope out people out there learn a little bit from this as well. Uh, my thanks to my co-hosts and mostly to the uh, people who are watching. Thanks for watching, and uh, 
We will catch you again next week. We've got a couple of shows lined up, and we will talk to you again on Wednesday at 2. This is Off Press. 